Welcome to Student Connections, where students connect with their community. Hello and welcome to Student Connections. I'm Mackenzie Guzzo and joining us today is Dr. Kevin Miller, Superintendent at St. Clair County, Risa. Hi, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> so many viewers know that you began teaching in Marysville. Can you explain your career journey and how you have arrived in this new position? Right, well, I, I started actually out at the middle school and I taught for five years at the middle school. And then the principal at the time, Mr. Haddon, uh, came to me and said, uh, this is in the old high school before it was torn down. We had a learning center in the basement and it had uh, room for both a television and radio studio that we had nothing in at that point. Uh -huh. So in 1998, he said, would you be interested in coming to the high school and starting a communication arts program? And uh, prior to getting into teaching, I was actually in radio and television for almost 20 years. So that was part of my background. And so it was a natural fit for me to do that. So we started the program from scratch in 1998, and it's great to see it blossoming into what, mm -hmm. what you have here today. From uh, After five years here at Marysville High School, I took an administrative position as an assistant principal at uh, East China Schools at Marine City High School. And then a year later, I became principal at St. Clair Middle School. And then four years later, I became superintendent of Croswell Lexington Schools. Wow. And then from Croswell Lexington Schools, I arrived at St. Clair County Risa a couple of years ago, knowing that uh, Mr. Dan DeGro, who was the superintendent of Risa, would be retiring in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. So uh, he had really wanted someone with St. Clair County background and education to take over the Risa. And so uh, when I came to Risa, I knew that I would have an opportunity to be the superintendent uh, when he retired a couple of years later, and that's just recently happened. Yeah. So that's a quick synopsis to my career. <laughs> Now, can you help us better understand the role of RISA and how you support education throughout St. Clair County? That's a really good question, Mackenzie, because we do so many things that sometimes I have to remind myself of how much we do. Uh, I would say our first and foremost, we support students in St. Clair County to give them opportunities that they might not have at their local school. For instance, you here in Marysville have about 70 students that go to our Career and Technical Education Center, better known as Tech. Uh -huh. uh, students have a chance to go to Tech to get some online learning there. We also have a Woodland Developmental Center for some of our severely handicapped students in the county. But we also, in our administrative end, we work with uh, the school districts to train teachers, professional, we call it professional development. We mm -hmm. work with them after they've already got their teaching degree, but they, maybe they're a new teacher or, teacher or they're learning something new. So we work with teachers all over the county. We have meetings every month with our principals, elementary, middle, and high school principals. And then we also meet with our uh, superintendents of all seven mm -hmm. of our local school districts every month as well. Uh, we provide services like payroll, uh, informational technology services. In fact, all of your repairs that are done on your computers here in Marysville are done by our RISA uh, IT staff. Oh, okay. uh, so we provide uh, instructional technology support for your district uh, and others around the county, uh, business services, it goes on and on and on. So we, and not only for school districts, we also do some business services for some of our townships, for the city of Marysville, mm -hmm. for St. Clair County. So we, uh, we do a lot for the county, but mostly it's, it's for education. Yeah. So tech is one way RISA supports career education. Can you explain a little more about how tech is different from traditional schools? Yeah, tech is different in that, first of all, it's completely hands-on. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm a firm believer, and this is the way I learn, too, that you learn a lot better by doing uh, and actually following through and learning why you do something and then actually doing it rather than just teaching it out of a book right. uh, and then doing a report on it, which is traditional style of learning, but tech... We have 11 programs, actually about to add a 12th, and I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about our new, our new program here in a little bit, but we have 11 programs that are designed, and you ask for differences. One difference is that students are working toward a real certification that they can take with them that helps them get a job right out of high school if that's what they desire mm -hmm. to do. But 87% of our kids at Tech go on to college, which is I think is amazing. That's higher than the county average, actually. So they usually go on and get two, uh, two years degrees or a certification beyond their certification they got at tech or they go on to a four-year degree as well but the basic difference is that it's real live learning on the job if uh -huh. you will and then a lot of our programs in year two you learn at tech in year one and year two you actually go out into the workforce and do a either a paid or unpaid internship out of the field wow that's nice yeah do you anticipate any new changes with the tech program 
So you kind of jumped right to the next year program. We're going to actually add computer programming. A lot of it will be 3D gaming, game design, uh, but the students will learn several platforms and how to, uh, for instance, the HTML5, C++, C Sharp. There are several programs that allow you to program a computer mm -hmm. uh, to get it to do what you want it to do. And that's what really happens in game design or app design, things like that. So we're excited about adding computer programming. We felt it's been necessary in our county for many, many years. Mm -hmm. it, there, and the 50 hot jobs in the state of Michigan, about 14 of those involved computer programming skills. So we really yeah. feel like this program will help us to prepare students for the future and for jobs that exist right now and are going to exist in the future. How else do you help students in districts learn about all of the careers in demand and the skills needed? So one of the things that we did when I came on board at RESA a couple of years ago is we took a look at how do we, uh, because too many times when a student graduates, and I would hope that, Mackenzie, when you graduate, you don't say, I have no clue what I want to do. <laughs> There's too much of that going on, right? So yeah. we want to expose students to as many things as possible while they're in grades 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 to where when they, when they graduate, they can say to us, I don't maybe know exactly what I want to do, but I have a pretty good idea. Right. And that's because I've been exposed to all these uh, things like job shadowing, internships, visits to businesses, businesses come, partnering with education coming in and telling about what they do so that students can explore a little bit and get a little bit better feel for what they want to do. Mm -hmm. We believe that instead of just deciding in a college, you need to decide basically what you'd like to do. And if you have a good idea, that will drive where you go after high school. In other words, if I want to be an engineer, that, that's great. That's a great career. What type of skills will I need? Well, that'll guide your high school career. Take more math mm -hmm. and a little bit of science while you're in school, too. And then that will drive what I do. To be an engineer, I know I need at least a four-year degree. So the idea of what you want to do drives the instruction that you're going to need after, after mm -hmm. high school. Woodland Developmental Center certainly helps many students. What are your thoughts of the Woodlands programs and possible changes? I wish everyone in our county could visit Woodland. Uh, it's a very special building, and I don't say that to be trite. I mean, it, it, there are special needs students, both developmentally and uh, with disabilities, that are there. But you walk in that building, and you just feel good about the staff that is helping students every single day. Mm -hmm. uh, and they do a, a fantastic job with uh, enabling students who can't walk to walk, enabling students that have not uh, that have struggled with their learning to learn. Uh, to give them opportunities that they've never, they've never had before. Uh, so it is uh, uh, rehabilitation services. We have a, a swimming pool that's designed to get students mobile that haven't been able to, to move a whole lot before. So there are so many services, and now we actually are embarking on a very rare thing where we actually have uh, an instrument where you can attach electrodes to the, the face and forehead, and students have never been able to talk are able to maneuver a mouse with this technology to be able to uh, to talk to us or tell us what they're thinking oh, wow. or react to answer questions. So imagine if you're a parent, you've never been able to communicate with your son or daughter and suddenly through technology now that mm -hmm. they can answer a question. You didn't even know how they were feeling or is there That's something awesome. wrong for them to be able to say. So yeah. these are all things that we do at this center that uh, make life better for the students that we come in contact with. RISA does quite a bit of training for all teachers in the county. Why is it so important that teachers continue to attend workshops and take classes? Now, we hope that people realize that education in 2017 is a little bit different than it was in 1980. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and so our goal really is to enlighten teachers to, that there's a, there are different ways to instruct. It doesn't have to be done just exactly this way. Uh, and so I think the professional development is geared a lot around that. We're firm believers in what we call project-based learning. And in fact, in your communication arts class, that's what you do. You learn through doing actual projects. Yeah. That's the way the business world is in most cases. You don't work in a silo by yourself just doing stuff every day. You're actually working on projects that you're going to present to somebody, uh, hopefully a successful project that will help the company or the organization along. Mm -hmm. uh, we're firm believers that education should look more like that in every class, math right. class, language arts class, science class, that the more it's project-based and the more that it's hands-on, we believe the more that kids are into the course and they also see a reason for why they're learning that later on. Mm -hmm. I was one of those students in seventh grade that asked, why am I learning this math skill? 
<laughs> and, and, and the teacher was able to tell me, well, if you ever want to build a shed in your backyard someday, you're going to have to use these geometric principles. And so the fact that that teacher could answer that for me made me, okay, now I know why I want to learn it, right? right? So we need to do that more in education to let students know this is why you're learning what you're learning. This is how it can be applied to the real world in a job mm -hmm. later on. Right. How do you explain to the general public how education has changed over the years? Well, that's a loaded question. It's, it's changed a lot in that I think students are different. Uh, not as different as a lot of people would like to. I mean, a student today is very similar to a student 20 or 30 years ago. But I think students' expectations have changed about what they expect from their school and from their school district. I think public's perception has changed. They view education as needing to take a step forward and improve. I think that uh, we learn things far earlier than we learned them in my generation when I was in school. The expectations of a kindergartner and a third grader and a sixth grader and a ninth grader are far different than they were. Mm -hmm. So as educators, we need to change along with that. As uh, we look at education, we need to evolve and we need to understand that the students are different, the expectations in the job world are different, so we need to train students differently. Mm -hmm. And we need to give students more opportunity to explore different than it was years ago. Yeah. What are some of the newest trends in education that you may want to incorporate, such as new furniture initiative? So we, uh, and you have actually a classroom here in, in Marysville, Mr. Blaze's classroom. Uh, we've totally helped him redesign it with, with his assistance, but we call it our Classroom for the Future mm -hmm. initiative. And a lot of people think it was about the furniture, totally redesigning the room with furniture, but it really was about the learning space and what you do in the learning space. So along with refitting the rooms with new furniture, new colors on the walls and things like that, we actually did a ton of training with the teacher. Uh, we call it giving students a voice in their learning. Like, mm -hmm. What do you want to sit in? Do you want to sit in a, now we're sitting in a comfortable chair today. Why would we expect that a wooden hard seat chair that sits like this is exactly how students need to learn? Why can't students sit in a beanbag chair or a comfortable chair or a reclining chair? So we, we realize that we need to give students voice and choice in how they learn and, and what they learn in. So that's part of the theory behind it. The other part of it is that uh, in this new space, it needs to be collaborative. We need to give students a chance to bounce ideas off of each other, work together, collaborate on a project together. It's, again, a lot of what you do yeah. in this particular class that you're in, but that's what the world is asking for. The world, when you talk to business people and ask them what they want from a graduate of Marysville High School, they want somebody who can think and not just answer questions, but really think mm -hmm. and come up with solutions to problems, right? This will be a problem solver. They want somebody who can collaborate. They want somebody with public speaking skills. That's what you're learning to do in this class, yeah. right? So they want all these skills that previously we wouldn't have focused on in education that we need to make sure that those are primary focuses now in what we do. Mm -hmm. Many businesses are getting more involved with education. Are there any new businesses or education partnerships going on? Yeah, so one of the good examples of that would be uh, in the Marysville uh, sophomores last year, and actually two in the last two years participated in this. Uh, and this goes with what I talked about a little earlier in our design for the future of learning in St. Clair County. We want more experiences for students. We set up what's called manufacturing day visits. So every sophomore in the county, almost 2,000 sophomores visited our local manufacturers. Not all of them are going to end up in the manufacturing industry. Probably 10, 12, 14 percent of them will. But Mm -hmm. What we wanted to do is give them experiences to visit that organization. So that's one example of how we set up an opportunity for students at every school in their sophomore year to visit an organization. And we combined with 17 different manufacturing companies uh -huh. to make that happen. We're working with uh, eight different companies now to have them on a list of people who would actually come into classrooms to, if you're in a business class here at Marysville High School, an expert that would come in and be able to talk to you about business. So mm -hmm. the other uh, idea that we're really looking into is having uh, companies work with us on the curriculum that you actually learn. Mm -hmm. Like if you're gonna learn a business curriculum, why wouldn't you ask business people to come in and, and give you real life opportunities of what students should be learning about, right? right? So those are great examples of working together with business to uh, make learning better. Yeah. More realistic, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> As the new superintendent at RISA, what are your goals for all the schools in St. Clair County? Well, I think we've covered a few of them, but 
in in general, I think we want to uh, we want to invest in the experience for every student in our county, no matter what level that you're at. Whether you're a disabled student that goes to Woodland, or a student that really wants hands-on opportunities for uh, themselves at our tech building, we want to add programs that are needed to be able to prepare our students for the future. Right. So whether that be a college program or whether that be right directly into the workforce after graduation, we want to enhance the experience of students get more experiences while they're in high school. We know our local school districts like Marysville have their hands full in just teaching the curriculum that they're responsible for teaching, right? So we think one of our roles as a RESA is to provide those opportunities and training and work with our local school districts to be able to give them opportunities for their students that they may not be able to offer on their own. So that would be goal number one. Number, goal number two is going back to when you graduate McKenzie, I want you to be able, you'd be able to look me in the eye and say, I have a better idea of what I want to do with my life because of what we did. Right. in the county, right? And now because I know better of what I want to do, I know where I need to go to be able to get the training that I need to be able to get that job. That to me is priority number one. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure. a pleasure. I'm Mackenzie Guzzo and join us again next time on M6, your hometown station.